Hey everyone, welcome back to the Crazy Dreamer Network. My name is AJ and let's hop right into today's reading. So today's reading is a pick a card on adventures and explorations you can look forward to soon. We have four piles. Pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, and pile number four. Pile number one, we have the Aventurine Crystal. Pile number two, we have the Bloodstone Crystal. Pile number three, we have the Malachite Crystal. And pile number four, we have the Aquamarine Crystal, okay? Sorry if y'all hear some like noise in the background. It's raining pretty heavy um, outside of my window. So let's give you all some time to meditate on your pile selection card. About 30 seconds. You can do deep breaths or whatever you'd like to do. All right, so all right, my dreamy dreamers, I love you sh so much. Shout out to Aussie for um, actually picking today's topic. Thank you so much, my friend. And until next, and <laughs> I will see you all in your readings. Bye. Okay. Hey, pile number ones, welcome back to your reading. So you all either chose this adventuring crystal or this particular card. Let's start off with your crystal uh, selection. So adventuring brings in good luck, friendship, prosperity, and career success. So in regards to the adventures and explorations you can be looking forward to soon, there's a lot of celebration coming in your way, a lot of prosperity, almost as if it just feels like the gates of heaven, so to speak, are opening up to you. And it's interesting because look, even on this card, even on this card, and I haven't seen the cards yet, like I haven't flipped them over, um, this person is opening up something, right? They're opening up to something, okay? So I feel like in regards to the adventures and explorations that you can look forward to, this could be business ventures, right? This could be uh, business ventures, not just by yourself either, but with friends, loved ones, uh, companions, people you've known for a while that makes the success that makes the success, excuse me, taste even that much sweeter uh, when you attain it, right? So uh, again, adventuring brings good luck or blessings, friendship, prosperity, and career success. So I have a feeling it's a lot that's coming into your life right now in regards to uh, those things. And you're really in just this celebratory energy uh, pile number ones that you could really look forward to for some time right now, okay? So let's put your crystal down. You all also got an extra card that fell out of the deck, which is the High Priestess. I love this High Priestess card. Like the major arcanas in this um, deck, I love it. Like, and you guys, I never use these cards like this and I don't know why, but I never, I usually just use like the aces. I, I may have used the court cards and I'll use like the uh, major arcanas, but I just decided like, I never use this deck. Let's give it some love. Right? So again, you all's extra card is the high priestess. I love this um, depiction of the high priestess. Cause it reminds me of sailor moon for some reason. Um, it's just very whimsical and very mysterious, but very like, like in a very good way, in a very profound way to where it makes me want to know more about what lies beyond the veil, so to speak, right? Uh, we have these steps. We have a, we have these, um, pomegranates right here on these, the staircase, so to speak. And then you have this crown with more moon emphasis, right? So, 
pile number ones, you all could be having these psychic downloads or like these secrets being like whispered in your ear almost, right? And you don't know how or why you're getting them, but it it's like this profound mystery that you are about to unveil, right? And I feel like it's going to be very shocking. It's going to be very shocking. And I don't think, for some reason, I'm getting just in this really amazing way, in this really amazing, profound way, and like in a very like jubilant way. I just can't really, we obviously have to go into more detail as it pertains to the overall reading, but just with this extra card here being the high priestess, secrets are coming out, but really good ones, almost like things that you have been wanting, things that you have been anticipating for a while now are now being fulfilled. They're now coming to the surface and how they come to the surface might shock you a little, okay? So I digress. Let's go along with the reading, right? So let's reveal your pile selection card. And we have card number 11, passion. Come on. It says, passion, rise, passion, rise up high, inflame my purpose, reach the sky. So like I was even suggesting, like whatever you're doing, whatever adventures and explorations that you're going to be looking forward to, there is there is going to be an enthrallment of passion behind it. And I mean, like this could be something in regards to a passion project, you being passionate with your partner or you being passionate about your friends and your family who's ever helping you with this I feel like it's not only you seeing the vision but they also see the vision I also feel as if this could pertain to a significant other or someone that you are romantically linked with because we do have the lovers here so obviously it doesn't have to be in regards to romance this could just be a very passionate soulmate connection right someone you feel very very tied to someone you, in in a good in a um healthy way uh not like you know bonded to but tied to like someone you wouldn't mind being tied to you all are on the same page even if you have different ways of expressing it it's almost like integral like you all are integral part of each other's lives right and I feel like there could be a new beginning. There could be travel coming in with someone uh, who is your soulmate, right? And it, you might be shocked by it. You just might, okay? So again, card number 11, you could be seeing 11, 11 a lot. These could be just thoughts permeating through your subconscious mind, very heavy, right? Like, you know, it's almost like you're living the life that you are passionate about, right? And uh, that's going to bring in a lot of success, a lot of growth, a lot of prosperity, a lot of uh, divine intervention, a lot of uh, blessings, right, into your life. So again, you could say this, uh, uh, you could repeat this spell and it says rise passion rise up high and flame my purpose reach the sky okay and i feel like you all could be getting this extra oomph of a uh, passion within you that is really going to take your either a passion project or something that you've been very passionate about whether that's work whether that's a relationship to the next look to the next level okay so let's delve into the reading pile number ones and we're going to do the Celtic cross and, uh, you know, I'll incorporate some freestyle, you know, insights and whatnot. So in the you now heart of the matter position with the first card, the first card in tarot typically connotes the strongest energy, right? So we have the three of cups and the three of cups talks about, you know, abundance in regards to prosperity in regards to friendships in regards to connections in regards to having fun having a good time to me the three of cups this is like my party card like we're partying we're celebrating our wins our successes okay and it's interesting because at the bottom of this three of cups we have the queen of pentacles so you could be celebrating like closing a deal pile number ones or you could be celebrating like just really being stable overall like just looking at your life looking at the people around you and 
it being a direct reflection of how you have taken care of yourself from the inside out, right? And not just yourself, but how you've had the passion and the wherewithal to take care of others because you placed emphasis on taking care of yourself from the inside out. You were able to uh, also help others uh, by showing them that it could be possible, right? I feel like people know how nurturing you are, how caring you are, but people also realize how abundant you are in your nature, right? Just you being you, you have this abundance mindset, abund abundant personality, and it's infectious. So, so with these, so in the blockage slash challenge positions, we have the lovers. So I feel like pile number threes, I mean, pile number ones, that <laughs> you and a soulmate could be very opposite in nature, but also kind of complementary. You see, if you kind of like look back at this image, like give yourself a little space from the image, it kind of goes with each other, right? And I feel like with the lover's card and the three of pentacle, and then three of cups, excuse me, you could be celebrating a lot with a soulmate or even wondering, okay, what should I celebrate with this person? And what shouldn't I celebrate with this person? Is it, is it healthier? Is it wise of me to, uh, obviously celebrate everything with them, but also not feel like I have to be attached to the hip with someone, right? Have my own independence is what I'm also getting, right? I feel like also pile number ones, there could be something in regards to higher levels of commitment with a, a soulmate connection, right? There could be you maybe, and, and with the full card being at the bottom of the lovers, you wanting to go to higher heights with this person, right? You wanting to do things that, um, you normally don't do with this person, right? You maybe want to travel. You maybe want to experience new things, okay? So in in relation to the adventure and explorations to look forward to soon, there's going to be a lot of passion with a soulmate connection, right? But I also feel like with passion, we have to make sure we're balanced, right? Because passion can get carried away. So I, I just want to say that as just like, you know, just like a disclaimer and things like that, because there's a lot of celebration here and there's a lot of celebration, even within the integration of someone or something. Okay. So you could have integrated maybe different aspects of your personality, your passion with business, things of that nature, right? Maybe it doesn't even have anything to do with a significant other, right? And you are like doing new things, like things that have not been done before. And in and of itself, this is very explorative, right? In the conscious goal position, we have the Hierophant, okay? So this is Taurus energy. So I feel like pile number ones, you're craving stability. You're craving this, almost this kind of like conventional sense of stability too, right? I think it's funny too, because we have like this Buddhist kind of temple here. I wouldn't even call this a temple. It's like an awning and you have a picture of a temple and then you have this cat and this cat is like sitting at the feet of this shrine. And what I'm getting is that I feel like you, your conscious goal is to teach, right? Is to provide people with insights and clarity that you have learned uh, through your growth, right? Through your sense of growth, through your sense of introspection. Um, and I also feel like you're just, you're ready for higher levels of commitment. And that could even be from yourself, right? From the other side. It's like, Yes, I've keened in on my passions. I've like narrowed in on them. I'm making progress with them. 
but I need to up the ante. I need to take it a step further is what I'm getting. At the bottom here, I believe this is a page of cups. So I feel like you know you want a higher sense of commitment or passion or something like that, but you're also okay with taking it a step at a time and being lighthearted with this and not putting too much pressure on yourself or on another person about this is what I'm getting, pile number ones. Because you're, you're ready to have fun. And maybe you want to up the level of fun that you have as well, right? Maybe you want to start traveling. Maybe you want to just do something that's outside of the norm, ironically enough, with the uh, Hierophant card. Like outside of your general duties, outside of what you typically do for fun, quote unquote. It's almost like you want to reinvent the fun that you have, the lighthearted air that you have about yourself, right? In the unknown influence position, we have the four of wands with stability, okay? So in the unknown influence, you're a very stable person. And I feel like maybe you've been experiencing a little bit of monotony when it comes to your stability. Because I feel like pile number ones, you all thrive from passion, right? It gives you good feelings. It, it almost gives you like this edge, right? This leg up. But I feel like you've been finding yourself more stable and you love it and it helps you. It helps you with your, you know, your growth process. It helps you with your growth rate. It helps you with your mentality. But I feel like it also kind of causes a little anxiety here with the Nine of Swords because you might not be wired, you know, for just doing every day as if it were the last day. You know what I mean? Like with stability and structure, it typically looks like having the same type of routines every day, having the same type of, you know, fill in the blanks. But I feel like in the unknown influence, seeing the same things every single day could provide you with a tad bit of anxiety. Okay. And I feel like you just want to shake up the status quo, right? You want more passion in your life, whatever that is, even if you're coming to grips with, okay, well, what makes me passionate now? You know, I feel like a change of scenery. I keep getting a change of scenery. And I think this is what it is because they have this whole temple right here, almost as if this cat or something is manifesting a change of scenery. But I feel like you're doing so lighthearted. So in regards to this, it's interesting, pile number ones, because I'm getting a little air of cognitive dissonance, right? In the conscious goal, we have the hierophant. So it's like, yes, I want this stability. I want this, um, this, uh, commitment, right? Or I want this, um, higher levels of commitment, higher, higher levels of like, um, what's it called? Like institutionalization. That could be schooling. That could be marriage. That could be, you name it. But also I think, feel like simultaneously you could be a little anxious about it, which is normal as heck, uh, is super normal. But, um, but yeah, so just kind of like realize that as well. That's, it's very normal to have those type of reservations about like going up the ladder, so to speak. And I think that's interesting because we have the high priestess here with going up the staircase. So Ooh, pile number ones. You know what's interesting? You're also going up a spiritual ladder or going up a spiritual staircase as well. You're getting to higher and higher heights as it pertains to your consciousness. And I feel like it's unlocking a lot of things for you. Maybe even things that you didn't know was there in you or that you know had to be explored or that you knew had to be... Um, reckoned with right and the tower here like this is a very spiritual read this is extremely spiritual we have the hierophant the strength card the high priestess and the tower extraordinarily spiritual so in regards to this um i just feel like you're unlocking a lot of caverns in your mind right now different doors in regards to what you're passionate about how to get that internal driver and how to like 
kind of like turn down the noise and turn up um, spirit, you know? Turn down the external noise and turn up spirit. And I can see that's your conscious goal because you're very receptive to spiritual downloads, to energies, to insights, you name it, especially with this page of cups. Okay. So, um, in the past influence position, we have the five of cups. I feel like you've overcome a lot of disappointment, a lot of like heartache. And I feel like this has something to do with friendships. And I feel like you could be meeting a lot of new friendships who are like opposite, but are the same in a, in a similar way. Right. And it's interesting because I feel like something brings y'all together. A commonality brings y'all together. Because I don't know if you could tell, there is a, I think, vanilla plant here in the center of this table. And that's the only thing that is similar, right? There's a commonality between the new group of people that I think you all are meeting. Because with the Five of Cups here, it talks about, you know, disappointment. And in the traditional Rider Way tarot, you can see that there's three cups spill over, but there's two cups still uh, remain standing up, right? And um, I think that's really cool because, you know, parts in our lives, we're going, going to be disappointed by certain things, people, places, or, or situations, right? And I know Bob Marley says, everyone's going to disappoint you. It's, it's uh, finding the people who are worth the disappointment. You know what I mean? Because we're humans, right? We're infallible by nature. I mean, we're fallible by nature. We're not infallible, <laughs> but we're fallible by nature, right? So um, yeah, everyone's going to disappoint us in one way, shape or form. And that doesn't necessarily have to be these huge disappointments. That could just be someone, you know, didn't call us when we wanted them to, or we hadn't talked to a friend in a long time, or a friend had to miss our birthday because they were traveling or, you know, you name it. And it doesn't have to be these big things that we feel slighted by or disappointed by. Someone could just say something wrong to us on the wrong day and we feel, you know, disappointed by that. But I feel as if you have been given the strength, okay, the inner strength, and you have been forged through whatever that it was that you went through and have cultivated that strength of disappointment. Because I feel like while you feel, hey, you know, other people, sure, they might disappoint me from time to time, but I don't have to disappoint myself and I don't have to just, I don't have to just sulk in it, right? You see how carefree this lion looks? Like just rolling around uh this bed of flowers right like just relax chill like not over analyzing anything okay maybe you know could have went through a sense of disappointment here or some sadness right but it knows that they'll be okay <laughs> you know knows that that's not the end of them right so in the approaching uh, influence position, we have the queen of pentacles. Okay. So you could have like an earth sign coming in more specifically a Taurus Capricorn Virgo. I say Taurus because we have the hierophant, um, in the conscious goal. So you could be looking for a loan and there could be an earth sign, particularly like a feminine aspected earth sign. Does not have to be a feminine? Uh, doesn't have to be a female or anything like that. Um, but could be more like nurturing, caring, or cares about certain things that delve within that, those topics, right? Delves within femininity, delves within nurturement, delves, delves within spirituality, okay? But there could be like this mill ticket here from a person, and this could be uh, through an earth sign. And maybe you all can meet through a friend doesn't have to be but the hierophant also stands for like institutions banks loans things of that nature so you know that could be something here as well um in your inner resources and talents position we have the fool you're able to take 
risk pile number ones. And I feel like you're able to take risk with your passions, right? You're able to even explore taking risk uh, in connections as well, right? With the lover's card here, because I feel like this could go one or two ways. You're very well integrated with yourself, your masculine principle and your feminine principle, or you are able to be a little bit more carefree about the unknown when it comes to a love connection in your life, when it comes to uh, soulmate connections, right? You're okay to take risk there because you know the reward will be um, worth it, right? And it's interesting too, let's bring this up. You remember how I said you want higher levels of commitments and it's like you're going up a spiritual ladder? Look at that. Look at this this journey, this, what is this? Uh, Gosh, what the porcupine? I don't know what this is. And then you have this like staircase to quote unquote heaven. That's crazy. I didn't even notice that until now. So you're able to um, really just explore higher and higher heights. And this could be with someone. This could be with a team. This could be with like a friend, a friendship, a connection, a soulmate connection who has come into your life as a friend as well. Um, but y'all are going, and I feel like, I don't know why I want to say y'all. Y'all are going to higher and higher heights together. That's trippy. So, um, but like I was saying, in the inner resources slash talents position, you're not, you're not afraid of the unknown. You're just not. You're not. And I feel like you've cultivated this for some time now. You're not afraid to be an anomaly. And how others see you, we have the Page of Cups. So people could probably see very mag magnetic, very cute, very like um, carefree, flirty, lighthearted, very intuitive as well, right? Almost like being able to see through the mind of a child, right? In a, in a very beautiful way, like childlike vision about something, like anything can happen, anything goes, you know? Anything is possible, so to speak, with this page of cups here. I ha Okay, so, oh, also, this is the elemental tarot, elemental power tarot, pile number ones. Okay, yeah. So in your hopes and fears, we have the Nine of Swords. I feel like in your hopes for the Nine of Swords is that like, you know, this too shall pass. You know, maybe if, you know, you were struggling with some stability here, um, saying affirmations, decreeing that, you know, this too shall pass. This will pass. This is only temporary, right? And then your fears could be, well, what if I'm anxious always what am i what if i'm anxious for the rest of my life what if the fears that i have actually come to fruition right you know how they say in the bible uh i don't know who what was it david the thing that i feared has now come to pass i feel like that that could be um keeping you up at night a little bit pile number ones in regards to stability this could be a connection as well with someone right and in the outcome position, we have the strength card. And I love this. I feel like you have the inner resilience to handle whatever comes your way. And if this is disappointment, if this is like whatever, you're going to just brush it off. You're not, it's not even going to phase you. But it's interesting. It's funny to me because I feel as if this could have something to do with the friendship for some reason. This could have something to do with a friendship. Um, because we have the five of cups and the three of cups. Whenever I see the five of cups and the three of cups, this could just be me, but I feel like this could be like a lost connection here with friends. Cause there's, we have the lovers here. So that's soulmate, right? So it doesn't have to be romantic love, but I feel as if, um, the three of cups and the five of cups, that's like lost friendship or like a lost connection, right? And I say friends because it's not like the two of cups. Um, but yeah, it could, yeah. 
I have a feeling you know that whatever happens or whatever is going to happen um, was meant to happen and you're just, you still have things that are up. You still have things that are going on. You still have things that you're passionate about, right? That will allow you to move forward in your life. But I have a feeling for some reason, I'm getting like two stories. This could be a connection that was lost that is like, you all are kind of like, thinking a lot about one another or this could be a new connection coming in right like a friendship group coming in and um someone could be a little disappointed that maybe you have met this friend or you are kind of connecting to someone that maybe they don't connect with but it's almost like they probably brought you guys together it's weird I don't know why I'm getting that there's like this big epiphany happening though in your life. I have a feeling for some of you, obviously this won't relate to everyone. This has something to do with business. And I, I'm only getting that with the queen of pentacles and the hierophant. Like something to do with like moving forward, going up the corporate ladder, going up the ladder of success, things of that nature, especially when it comes to this adventuring as well. So I digress about number um, ones. Let's pull some more cards, okay? Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. Tell me more, Spirit. What else do our pile number ones need to know about the adventures and explorations they can look forward to soon? So this card just flew out so Oh my gosh. You know what's crazy, y'all? In the beginning of the reading, I don't know if you, you know, um, listen from the beginning to the end, but right before I started this reading, there was a lot of thunder happening. There was a lot of thunder happening, okay? So we have the thunder and lightning card with power. I feel like you hold a lot of power right now. I don't even think you realize how much power you have. And this could be something manifesting from the dream state into reality. Like something come, it is going to blow you. Pile number ones. Like you, you're, you're talking about adventures and exploration. You're about to go on a wild ride. Okay. And it, I feel like this has something to do with the dream state. Something's really going to shock you. And I think, but it's it's, it's going to shock you because it's almost like a secret, but I feel like you already know about it. That's so trippy. Tell us more, Spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number ones in regards to the adventures and explorations they can uh, look forward to very soon. Okay, so look. So these two cards just flipped out. So we have psychometry sensitivity and we have handwriting authenticity. Let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. And then we have flowers, fickle, okay? Hmm. So this... So this could be about a... Like I was saying, some of you, this could be about a relationship that you know... You could be getting two different things from two different people, right? Oh my gosh, I'm getting so much right now. <laughs> um, hmm. So I feel like your sensitivity and authenticity is your power. The, the overall generalness of these cards. I'm feeling like whatever you're feeling, trust it. This is something you could have manifested through scripting. And I don't know why this is just my scripting card. I'm just going to assign that meaning right now. It could mean more, you know. But right now, this is my scripting card. This could be a gift given to you soon, pile number um, ones that put you in the power position. It puts you in a power position. And it's because you've stayed true to your vision and working towards whatever it has been that you've been trying to achieve. I feel like you could have manifested something by writing it down a while ago and now it's being gifted to you. 
And I feel like with psychometry sensitivity, your sensitivity is your superpower, but it's also could be creating a lot of anxiety for you right now because you haven't completely changed your identity in regards to these superpowers, right? It's almost like, think about it like this. For those who remember, was it Clark Kent and Superman, right? So Clark Kent was kind of like this average Joe or whatever, this like, you know, person with these glasses on and a pocket protector during the day, but at night they were like psh, superhuman, right? And Clark, Clark Kent maybe even had like some insecurities like during the day and things like that. But at night, you know, they were more of themselves because they leaned into their powers. Now, what I'm getting is that with the psychometry sensitivity, you could be coming so powerful right now that you're sensitive to a lot of like things that are going on in your environment, right? Things that are going on in your environment, you're very sensitive to because it's like you're picking up on everything, even things that you feel like you really shouldn't even know. You don't want to know. You're picking it up, right? So in and of itself, this is this is an adventure because it's like, or look at it like such, right? Look at it as such. And it's funny because we're doing adventures and explorations and then this is the adventurine. It's not adventurine, but it's an adventurine. It kind of sounds like the same thing. I kind of want to read a little bit of this thunder and lightning card to you, but that's just what I'm getting. Okay, so look, it says thunder and lightning power. You have so many strengths, yet you allow people to take away your power. When your words are discounted or your actions mocked, your light fades. You may tell yourself it doesn't matter as long as you know the real truth, but the danger comes when you start to believe others' dif dismissive attitude, excuse me, dismissive attitudes towards you. Now is a time to take a stand and assert your authority so you can grow fully into your power and shine your light. Otherwise, you deny not only yourself, but others who could benefit from your gifts. Draw inspiration from the electrical charge of lightning. Learn the authority of thunder and stand bold. Never give your power away again. It says incantation. Spiteful words I won't allow. I no longer will. No longer will I scrape and bow. I grow in strength, not silently. I reclaim my power, become more truly me. And it says other divinatory meanings. Seeing lightning or dreaming about it also denotes an opportunity to express and cleanse yourself of any deep-seated anger you hold. Lightning is a buildup of energy seeking release. Hearing distant thunder indicates that there is still time to manage a, a potential difficult, a potentially difficult situation, excuse me. So that's so funny. You remember when um, I told y'all I was hearing thunder, like roaring, roaring thunder. Um, and I just feel like you're becoming a lot more sensitive to your surroundings. So you, pile number one is you have to do the things that will enable you to stand more boldly and stand more authentically uh, in any room that you're in, around any people that you're in, because I feel like you're, while your sensitivity is your superpower, you can literally use this to help others, help yourself, you also need to lean more into it on an internal level, however you do that. If that's walking, if that's meditating, if that's journaling, if that's therapy, you know, take your, pick your, pick your uh, selection, right? So, yeah, so that's all that I'm going to read here. But yeah, pile number ones, uh, I love this reading. It was amazing. So um, yeah, if you like this reading, if it resonated, please hit the thumbs up button, like, share, some, <laughs> like, share and subscribe, share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, my dreamy dreamers, I love you so much. And until next time, I'll see you in your next reading. Bye. Hey, pile number twos, welcome back to your reading. So you all chose this bloodstone crystal. I don't know if you all can see it. It's really pretty. It's, it's kind of like, it looks like a dark green with like red specks in it. And I will almost get like volcano, like volcanic 
energy from it, okay? So in regards to the bloodstone, as it pertains to adventures and explorations you can look forward to soon, uh, this talks about centering and calming your energy, right? And it brings abundance and strength, okay? So I feel like at this time, you could look forward to like, more of a calm state of mind, more of a calm presence, more of a calm state of being, right? And I feel like uh, you're exploring the depths of your mind right now and how to kind of like cool those fires, cool all that incessant chatter in your mind right now, right? By maybe uh, incorporating more meditation, incorporating more like uh, long walks or just being still within the peace that you find yourself in, right? Not thinking too much, right? Once, that's why I love meditation. Once we train ourselves not to overthink or overanalyze every single thing, it really helps with our spiritual growth. It really helps with our mindset, so to speak, right? Uh, and that allows like fun to happen. It allows adventure to happen when you're not constantly overthinking, but you're more spontaneous, right? You're not overly analytical of a situation or like, oh, well, I want to go to this, right? <laughs> I want to go to this party or this event, but like, what if this, that, and the third happens and you're looking for every reason why you shouldn't go where there's so many reasons to why you should go and participate, right? So without further ado, let's reveal your pal selection card. So card number 24, Magical Powers. I think this is the first time we have gotten this card in, in a reading, uh, just as long as I've had this deck. So it says, I weave and clear, I cast and know magic secrets to me now show. And it's so fascinating, pal number twos, because y'all have the magician card. So what I'm getting is someone, listen, someone could be either enchanted by you right now and I say enchanted because we have the page of swords and I'm getting someone could be keeping like this really close eye on you and I know I'm hopping around but like these two cards actually really kind of like I focus on them immediately when um they were when they had popped out and I feel like someone could be keeping a close eye on you and I say I'm about to say a Gemini it could be a Gemini or someone with a Gemini Gemini highly aspected in their chart because look we have 24 2 and 4 6 and when I've seen this I thought of the lover's card right which represents Gemini now there isn't a lover's card here but we do have the page of swords which could be an air sign Libra Gemini or an Aquarius right and they could be younger or more like have like a childish kind of mindset, okay? So that doesn't have to be the case, obviously, and it doesn't have to be the case for everyone. But you can have someone who is really like keeping a close eye on you and trying to like work their magic almost, like casting a spell or something. And maybe they don't really know what they're doing. And it's, I don't know. They could have casted a spell during a full moon because we have two full moons we have the actual moon card and then we have the magician who is doing this spell during the full moon okay so very interesting off that very interesting but i want to read a little bit uh from the guidebook about this card just because we've never gotten it in a reading before so let's see card number 24 it says card number 24 magical powers I weave and clear, I cast and know magic secrets to me now show, okay? So it says, sometimes when we cast magic, we may be too caught up in the everyday to weave quite as much enchantment. Oh my gosh, I just said someone was in, like enchanted with y'all. What the heck? So quite as much, quite as much enchantment as we could if we were in, it, excuse me, let me start over because where is my my mind okay so it says sometimes when we cast magic we may be too caught up in the everyday to weave quite as much enchantment as we could if we were more in touch with our magical powers this spell will help you reconnect with your magical self and your spells will become more powerful enjoyable and enchanting as a result it says if this spell has chosen you which it has um 
are, I'll read both. If this spell has chosen you, the universe would like you to reconnect with your intuitive, instinctual, mythic persona. Work this spell before performing any others, since without magical energy, it's difficult to weave true enchantment. To see the wonder of the moon, that's trippy, to see the wonder of the moon. So someone could be doing moon magic on you too. Um, to see the wonder of the moon, the glory of the sun, and the new beginning of the unfurled rolling bud right it says if you have chosen this spell you may wish to hurry along the impact of your spells or perhaps you are finding it hard to move out of the everyday you may wish to empower your spells and reawaken to the wonder of the natural magic all about you and deep within you fear not the spell will reopen your intuitive receptors and you will be resensitized to the magical abundant universe through which your spells will grow in power okay so eh, the the meaning behind this kind of applies from what I'm getting, but I'm getting this strong feeling of what I just said, like literally what I've just said. Yes, it's about enchantment and personal things, but I'm really feeling like someone's intention around you could be, um, yeah, like, huh, yeah, could be brought on. Like someone's keeping an eye on you, how you work your magic, how you do what you do, or vice versa. They could want to learn and maybe they're they're weaving something that's involving you, pile number uh, twos, okay? But without further delay, let's get into your reading. So we have at the bottom of the deck, the Four of Swords, all right? Ironically, this is in reverse. I don't, I'm not really doing reversals in this deck. I'm just not doing it today. But um, I feel like you're ready to, I'll, I'll give you both instances. You're ready to kind of like awaken to your power, right? You're ready to awaken to the gifts that are within you. Also, I feel like you could be feeling very drained, okay? They could, they could be like this kind of like succubus or something like that around you and you don't know why. There's a lot of swords here too. There's the, we have the four of swords, we have the eight of swords, we have the knight of swords, and then we have the page of swords. So there could be a lot of thoughts centered around you right now, even with different people. Or there is just like this overthinking, this over-processing of information going on around you and within you right now, pile number twos. And I feel like you're just ready to kind of like not be in that state of mind anymore. I feel like you feel like you're rested. You're, re you're almost like antsy to a degree, right? Especially with this being in reverse. Um, you're not... How can I put this? It's like in on, one hand, you're feeling like, okay, I'm ready to do what I have to do. And then uh, on the other hand, it's kind of like hard to do it because you're like, well, where is this drained energy coming from? Like I'm getting rest, you know, I'm eating better or whatever. I'm, you know, I don't feel drained, but it's like I'm drained. It's like I'm distracted. It's like, you know, I'm kind of like caught off guard with, yeah, that's when I'm getting caught off guard with like a train of thought <laughs> that I thought I had resolved already, okay? So let's hop into your reading. We're going to do the Celtic Cross and then I'll incorporate some freestyle. So we have in the you now heart of the matter position, we have the will of fortune, okay? So I feel like Jupiter, okay, is on your side. I feel like the will is up in your favor. You could be seeing a lot of things moving now, right? A lot of moving parts uh, actually operating in tandem, right? It being like a well-oiled machine, okay? I feel like you feel good right now. You feel happy. You feel abundant. You feel blessed. You feel protected right now with the Wheel of Fortune. And then in the blockage position, we have the Eight of swords again it's like you feel all these things and yet you still have this lingering sense of like self-limitation this lingering sense of like anxiety but it's almost as if you're putting it on yourself but you're not <laughs> pile number twos and that's just what I'm getting you're not like I feel like someone's thoughts of you could offer some confusion or like even Let's say you are in this little state of anxiety or like the challenge with these incessant thoughts or the, these limitations that you're putting on yourself could be blocking um, 
the true experience of joy when it comes to, you know, your blessings, <clears throat> the blessings be, being bestowed upon you. And it could create like a blockage, like a pause with this Knight of Pentacles here, right? It could create like a little bit of a pause. Um, with the Seven of Cups being at the bottom of this Ace of Swords, I feel like, yeah, you're confused. Like, well, where did this anxiety come from? Came come from I feel kind of like muddy like my mind is like clouded right now and I wasn't feeling like this a day ago or I wasn't feeling like this a couple days ago so maybe retrace your steps go back to what you were doing a couple days ago a couple weeks ago a couple months ago and try to re-implement that and if it works maybe you found what was going on right if it doesn't I feel like there could just be a lot of I just keep getting a lot of minds, collective minds, collective energies just on you right now. And it's taking a toll on your mind, okay? In the conscious goal position, we have the Knight of Swords. So I feel like, yeah, you're rushing into something. And you see how this Knight is kind of rushing in. They're about to get in over their head, so to speak. That's what I'm getting. They're getting in over their head, right? They're uh, going head first, right? And I feel like there's still some things that you need that needs to come to the forefront yet that there's still some things, pile number twos, that you're not aware of, right? That's kind of like insidious, that's looming, you know, behind the shadows and stuff. So take your time. You don't have to rush into anything. Take your time. Uh, let some more things come to light before you just start rushing into anything because things could be kind of like eerie or like odd or like suspenseful or like even a little weird um, coming up. And I love this card. I love the, the energy of this moon card. I don't know if you all can tell, but there's like this, this monster or something like coming up. So you could be going head first into like a lot of like unconscious fears or like a lot of unconscious like unresolved things could be coming in quickly right or you're wanting to battle it you're wanting to kind of just confront it head first and uh get rid of it but i feel like eh, that's not the way to go the way to go is to like don't bombard yourself into trying to get away from this fear, right? I feel like you're running from this fear. You're running from the things that you don't know, but you might need to go towards it, right? You might need to confront it in a way. So in the unconscious, uh, in the um, unknown influence position, we have the magician. We have the magician. It's almost like as above, so below, as within, so without. So maybe you're questioning yourself like, okay, what is it that I'm thinking? Why, you know, I see all these things kind of like manifesting before my eyes, right? There's like the, this intensity of manifestations coming in, right? And it's interesting because it, they're coming in swift, right? And this could be someone, um, this could be someone or this could just be like an energy, like this trickster energy or like something like that pile number twos in which uh, things are just really manifesting very rapidly. And I feel like it's everything, right? With the magician, it's like the power does lie within us. And like, how are we really training our subconscious mind? What are we absorbing? What are we feeding into, right? Think about those things because maybe if we're feeding into certain things that um, we don't understand or that, you know, cause us more harm than good, then it's a good time to kind of like release ourselves from that, that type of mindset, right? In the past position, we have the three of cups. So I feel like, again, you are feeling very good, very abundant, mind, body, soul, spirit, very prosperous, very like, you know, I could take it, I could take on anything, a happy, like joyful, like celebratory, right? You are feeling this, okay, with this three of cups here. Um, 
you know, and I feel like this had a lot to do potentially with things that you were working on, uh, maybe working in a group or maybe working with a friend that really helped you out, uh, or just being able to consistently do something inch by inch when it came to work, right? And being able to celebrate that win, those victories. In the approaching influence, we have the Knight of Pentacles. So I feel like something is like coming to a pause or there could be a um, uh, an earth sign coming in, Capricorn, almost like a kind of like a younger earth sign coming in, Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus that could um, really be like goal oriented. Uh, or maybe you're just becoming more like, you know what, let me get back to my day-to-day -day routine because that's what gives me my edge, right? Like we were talking about before, that's what gives me my superpowers. That's what helps me on a day-to-day -to, -day to uh, feel more blessed, feel more prosperous, feel like I'm on top of my game, feel like I'm on top of the wheel of life, right? So this could either be a person or this could be a characteristic that you are about to embody, okay? Okay. So in your inner resources uh, and talents position, we have the seven of cups, which talks about dreaming. I feel like you have these really big dreams. You have these really big goals, right? Um, and that's that gives you a leg up. That's a talent. That's a resource that you could pull from, right? You might like to daydream a lot. It might help you um, as it pertains to getting to your goals, right? keeping them in mind. Um, yeah. How others see you is the moon. People could see that you're mysterious, that you don't maybe even let a lot of people in, that, you know, you're very elusive, right? Uh, we have Pisces here. So people could see you very mysterious, very mystical, very like what is in their head, right? Very like, tapped in to the realm of the unknown and even like subversive in certain ways, even like, um, when it comes to the moon card, even like, um, <clears throat> kind of even dark too, like a little dark, like, you know what I mean? Like, and not in a bad way, but like, very subconscious, right? Very tapped into your subconscious mind. Very deep is what I'm trying to get, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. And they could see you like this, maybe just right now, like an alien, like, you know, you see this flying saucer in the background, like they could see you like that. Um, in the hopes and fears position, you have the page of swords. So I feel like your hopes is to be ready, quick on the draw when it comes to things, having your wit, having this charisma about you, having like um, this kind of fun, kind of like laissez-faire personality, but like, but also quick, right? Not too chill, but like, you know, good with retorts, good with comebacks, good with like communicating, you know, your thoughts, your ideas, right? Having that edge, and also the fear could be maybe someone or certain things are just too on your mind, right? Maybe you're absorbing a lot of like negative gossip or like things that you normally don't, but it's kind of like mystifying you. It's like hypnotizing you. It's like taking you on a ride and it's almost like you can't get off, so to speak, right? Also, this could be a person who maybe you don't realize is keeping too much of an eye on you. And I feel like that could be like the fear, quote unquote, aspect of this, right? You don't know what they're trying to do, if they're trying to manipulate a certain situation or something like that. And then we have an outcome position, the eight of pentacles. So I just see you just going about your, your day to day, right? Going about your day to day, working on what you need to work for, taking things step by step, you know, and not letting this whole thing get to you. You're just doing what you have to do so you can uh, attain the things that you want in the near future. Pile number twos, okay? So let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck, for giving pile number twos clear. 
concise, accurate messages. On adventures and explorations, they can look forward to soon. Adventures and explorations are pile number threes can look forward to soon, spirit. Adventures and explorations, pile number threes can look forward to soon. I feel like someone could be a little afraid of like your magical powers as well. <laughs> they could be a little afraid. And I, I, oh goodness. I say that too, because I just feel like this Knight of Swords is kind of running away from this depiction. They're like, I'm getting out of here, you know? There's nothing to be afraid of, of course, but I think you could come across a little spooky to people because it's almost like you read their minds and they're like, what the hell? You know? So tell me more, spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages. And this definitely has something to do with the mind, the internal, because we have purple here uh, signifying the crown chakra. So yeah, you're tapped in, pile number threes and people, pile number twos, excuse me, and people know it. So tell us more, spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages uh, for our pile number twos, adventures and explorations for them to look forward to soon. Adventures and explorations that our pile number threes can look forward to soon. Clear, concise, accurate adventures and explorations our pile number threes can look forward to soon. Okay, so I think that's two cards. I don't know. So we have bottom of the deck shooting star confirmation. So I feel like this is more of a confirmation reading. You all, whoever has been, whoever views this reading, it's almost like this is just more so confirmation than giving you new information. It's like, okay, I already knew this, right? So we have dreams incubation. So yeah, you're really, there's a lot going on in the dream realm for you, okay? There could be a lot of insights, guidance, a lot of um, things coming up for you during your dream. So Try, if you can, to write them down, pile number um, twos. We have I Ching change. There's a lot of change going on. There's a lot of things you can't put your finger on, but you know things are changing. You know things are rearranging, uh, including within yourself, right? <laughs> and then we have crystal ball clarity. Again, this is just a confirmation reading. I feel like you have a lot of clarity on what it is you're doing or where it is you're going. Also, also another thing, I feel like ask for more clarity if you feel like you don't have it, right? Ask spirit. Like what I like to do is before sleeping and I need to do it more often. Sometimes I just fall asleep, which isn't the best. But um, what I like to do before going to sleep is ask a question to my subconscious mind to be answered by the morning time. So like if I have a problem and I'm like, I'm stumped, I don't know what to do. I ask my subconscious mind before going to sleep and typically almost like 90%, I get the answer upon awakening, usually. Sometimes it might take longer. Sometimes you have to ask the whole week, you know what I'm saying? And then you'll get your answer. Or sometimes you have it takes time, it just depends. But um, usually 90% of the time, those answers will be revealed to me the morning after, right? Or that, that morning. So I feel like your dreams, your incubation state, right? Have been giving you clarity that you might have not been paying attention to in regards to this change that's coming up. And it it's change that's obviously going to be in the best interest of you and everyone involved. And I feel like this could be change at work. OK. Or change with the work that you're doing, maybe in a group dynamic or something like that, especially with the outcome being the eight of pentacles. So, um, yeah, pile number two, that was kind of straightforward. So with that being said, my lovely dreamy dreamers, I love you so much. Pile number two, if you like this reading, if it resonated, please hit that thumbs up button, like, share and subscribe, share this content with loved ones, family, friends or anyone who you think would benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, if you're interested in a personal reading, my um, email will be in the description box below. Also, this is a dialogue, not a monologue. So leave some comments, you know, 
tell me about what's going on. Are you having dreams? Are you feeling confused right now? Are you feeling murky? Do you feel like someone is like, or you're allowing, right? Because I feel like people only do to you what you allow and that's energetic, energetically as well, right? So, um, and w no one's alone in this. Sometimes we just are unconscious and we just start ruminating and we allow people to kind of like take our powers just because we give it to them, right? Just even from the thoughts, right? The thoughts that we think. So are you allowing this? Are you, you know, feeling like you're protected from, you know, other people's like intentions when it comes to you, right? Let me know in the comments. I, I would love to, to hear about it, uh, palm in the twos, but... In any case, I love you all so much, my dreamy dreamers, and I'll see you in our next reading. Bye. Hey, pile number threes. Welcome back to your reading. So you all chose this malachite crystals. Malachite's one of my favorite. I just love the stone. It's so pretty and uh, it works. <laughs> all the stones work, of course, you know, but I love malachite. I just, I'm obsessed with it. So, um, Malachite, in regards to the adventures and explorations you can look forward to soon, is a uh, success in business, baby. Okay, um, and relationships. Okay, it provides protection also while you're traveling. So, pile number threes, you all could be traveling a lot for work right now, right? And really um, doing so with people you love. So use a malachite stone, maybe even get a little mojo package going on with the different travel stones if you're kind of concerned about uh, traveling right now, just incessantly, like maybe you're traveling back to back to different countries or different states or wherever you may be right now um, for business, right? So this could be for the success of your current business or like um, just to keep certain uh, business relationships going, right? To show that rapport, that you have a uh, rapport with, uh, you know, someone that you're working with, right? So um, yeah, if you're just cautious or, you know, thinking about, you know, there's so much to do, I have to pack and maybe in a short amount of time, uh, maybe keep a Malachite on you or maybe someone else is traveling, someone you love is traveling and they're kind of, they have their reservations right now just because there's a lot on their plates. Um, give them a Malachite or give them, adventuring is also good with traveling or aquamarine, something else. You guys could look up the different like uh, stones that you can give to your loved ones. You know, we're heading into holiday season right now. So there's a lot of people traveling right now. And, you know, certain people love to travel. Certain people don't because it's the getting there, right? It's not like, oh, I don't want to go visit this place. But the plane rides can be long, crowded, things of that nature. And, you know, that's kind of like a, a damper on anyone who travels a lot. Okay, so with that being said, let's hop into your reading pile number threes and reveal your pile selection cards. So we have card number 14 with friendship. I love this. This is really beautiful. It says, bring to me friendship true, sharing laughter, understanding too. I feel like I don't even think we've ever gotten this card uh, since I've been using this deck. So we have card number 14. Maybe uh, this is a friend who's traveling, right? Or, you know, you could be experiencing a lot of like um, simultaneous like almost like thinking about the past or thinking about a past friend uh, who travels in and out of your mind from time to time, right? Send them love, send them prosperity, send them good energy, right? Right now. You could also be traveling to or towards a friend right now, pile number threes, okay? One and four, that's five. So there could have been a change in this friendship, a change in this uh, friendship dynamic, okay? But maybe, maybe you will be traveling very soon to go see a friend or go, you know, you know, keep in touch with them. I do want to read a little bit from this book since this is a newer card that's coming out. Okay, so we have card number 14, friendship. It says, without caring, connected friendships, without caring, connected friendships, it is difficult to flourish and grow as a human. Because it is within these relationships that we practice and learn how to be better people. In friendship, we discover how to be with each other as well as who we truly are as individuals. 
This spell will offer you support in attracting, nurturing, and sustaining new and magical relationships. If you are dissatisfied with your current friendships, this spell may help you to disengage peacefully without rancor, uh, opening up spa space for healthy new connections to grow. If you are lonely, and many of us are, you may find yourself creating almost without any effort at all wonderful new friendships with people who support, love, understand, challenge, and challenge you in a healthy way inspiring ways okay so it says if this spell has chosen you you are being guided to consider your current relationships to look them over with a fresh eye this spell will help you to gain a deeper understanding of your existing friendships and it will also help you to meet people who actively encourage the growth of your soul propelling your future along the path to radiance and fulfillment if you have chosen to cast a spell, you know it's time to have healthier and more inspiring and nurturing, nourishing excuse me, relationships. This spell will help clear the way for health and love to enter existing relationships or allow them to peacefully reach an ending so you can move on and into relationships that you can truly grow within. Do not be afraid. You are a beautiful, loving soul with great potential to be surrounded by love. So again, pile number threes this could be about a relationship and it's interesting because it's funny because I have like this little book that comes from the store where I go get uh, some of my stones at sometimes it's just by my house and this description of Malachi came in but Malachi is also a transformation stone right so certain relationships in your life could be transforming and they could reach um like it said in the guidebook, uh, they could you could either be bringing in more relationships, like you know better relationships towards you if you're feeling lonely, or even like disconnecting with a friendship or something like that could be on the horizon. And I, I'm not thinking in a bad way. I'm thinking like maybe like putting yourself first, or there's something that you need to do and you have to go about doing it. You, it's it's almost like the juggling is becoming maybe overwhelming and you need to redirect a focus is what I'm getting. But this definitely has to do with the connection and friendship. So I digress. Let's get into your reading. We have a, you all got an extra card. So actually let's start with that first. You got the, I think this is a King of Cups. Let me clarify that. That's either the King or the Queen of Cups. It looks like it would be the King. Yeah, it's the Queen of Cups. That's so funny. So I'm glad I looked. <laughs> so you all got this extra card, the Queen of Cups. So some of you all could be water signs or have a lot of water uh, signs, highly aspect in your chart. So that's Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. So I feel like maybe pile number threes, you all could have been contemplating a relationship for a while and maybe a particular friendship. And it's like you felt something looming over you. Like maybe even second guess like second guessing how you're connected to this person or why you're connected with this person or like is the is the connection worth salvaging or something like that because with this queen of cups coming into the reading i'm getting there's a lot of nurturement there's a lot of heart that you place into relationships you could give and give and give and because you give so much pile number threes you almost don't see a return in the investment in certain relationships. And I, I feel like this could be your doing as well because you disproportionately give everything when you, uh, especially as it pertains to friendships. I feel like maybe you don't do this in like romantic relationships that you're in. Even with your family, you don't do this as much. But with your friendships, you give to capacity. You give so much you deplete yourself like literally and I don't know what that's about you know I have no idea but um I feel like you really do nurture the relationships that you see yourself in right um maybe even to the extremes and I say that because look in the inner resources talents position we have the ace of cups so I already know you give so much. You pour your heart and soul into friendships, right? Especially if you are a water sign 
or if you are a water element or have water element highly aspected in your charts, it's a part of you. You just give a lot emotionally, right? So when we give a lot emotionally, we also are probably taken from. Yeah, we're taken from a lot emotionally too, right? So at the bottom of the deck, we have the Knight of Pentacles. So what I'm getting is that you're grounding yourself. I didn't even realize Ace of Pentacles was right here until now, but I digress. With the Knight of Pentacles being at the bottom of the deck, I feel like you're slowing something up. You're taking a pause. This could be from someone, something, but I feel like you're taking a pause to regroup and to re-strategize because I feel like you've been feeling lost in people, lost in friendships, not having your own voice, your own identity, so to speak, right? So with the Knight of Pentacles, I I'm feeling like you're taking on these characteristics of like slowing something down, pausing, surveilling the lands, wondering if you should progress, how you should progress, strategizing, right? Um, being very meticulous about your time as well, right? Is what I'm getting also, uh, pile number threes with this Knight of Pentacles. Um, maybe there could be, um, an earth sign looming, right? That's coming in to maybe even help you to evoke these characteristics more. So that's going to help you, that's going to help teach you how to be in a routine that will work for you, right? And not deplete you and not deplete your friendships as well when it comes to it. So you can not really have like a work-life balance. Cause I feel like with entrepreneurs, I don't know if that's ever a thing, right? If you're an entrepreneur and you feel that way, put it in the comments. Like, is that a thing? Like, do you feel yourself like, yeah, I like to work, but I'm working all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really have to start managing my time a little better because then I could have so much more output and I will get back from my business. And maybe that's even just at the conception stage. I have to pour that into me and maybe, you know, friendships or people around me like that I don't want to say it takes from you because I'm not getting that at all I'm getting like it fulfills you but it's prioritizing I, that's just what I'm getting it's prioritizing friendships it's prioritizing your work the things that you have to do as well right so let's hop right into your reading pile number two, uh, threes we have in the you now heart of the matter uh position we have the five of cups right so you could be feeling kind of disappointed. You could be feeling maybe disappointment about a friendship, about a particular friend, how things ended or how things kind of like disintegrated, right? But you're all, I feel like on the flip side, you also realize you still have so much to do. You still have so much to work for. You still have connections in your life that really help you and that bring you the insight and the perspective that you need and that kind of like hold you down too, right? Uh, I feel like there has been a lot of disappointment when it comes to certain friendships, right? Or certain like friends who you used to like go out with all the time or like, you know, you have more of a social circle circle is what I'm getting, especially with the three of cups, I always get social circles, right? You know, you have people to go to when things were becoming, you know, a little lopsided for you or you have people to kind of bounce ideas off of and it was more than one right in the challenge slash blockage situation we have the two of pentacles which makes so much sense i feel like <sighs> there's maybe been a lot of emphasis placed on the disappointment when it comes to like allowing certain friendships to kind of like blow in the wind or kind of end how it ended but i have a feeling uh, this could have been a challenge because like you've realized you need to balance certain things, right? You need to balance, you need to balance the physical with your mental or your emotional state and learning how to do that, um, could be challenging, right? Learning how to manage your time better. When I get the two of pentacles, it's like balancing. Like I have like, let's say, uh, relationships and then work, right? Relationships and then work. Relationships on one hand, work on the other hand. So like, I'm, I need to learn how to balance and how to evenly distribute my love, my passion, my emotions towards them, or learning that I can't evenly distribute certain uh, emotions. I have to pour into what it is I'm working for that's in front of me. And then 
I will pour into A, B, and C, or I'll pour into, you know, certain relationships or situation. It's really your choice. And I feel like that's where you're at this crux, right? You're, you're learning how to do that. You're learning how to maintain your relationships without depleting yourself, pile number threes, okay? And this is a wild ride for you. I feel like this, you're exploring yourself and how this can be done, right? So in the conscious goal position, we have the 10 of cups. You want happiness. You want emotional fulfillment. And that means friends, families, friends, family uh, members uh, that feel like, you know, you all are tied in together, interconnected, right? You all are very balanced and at peace with one another is what I'm getting as well. You know, emotional fulfillment is that you want. And I feel like you're deciding on how to attain it, you know, how to attain it and maybe which ones to attain first or something, you know, in the unknown influence position, we have the emperor. Okay. Aries, um, coming in. So this could be an Aries person that you're thinking about, or this could be your devotion to your craft, your devotion to your business, your devotion to building an empire, to building something, right? That makes you happy. That makes you fulfilled. That makes you content. You want to really shine the light on this thing that's really progressing in your life and you want to build it into its its utmost, right? So that's what I'm also getting uh, with this emperor card here is that also pile number threes, if you're interested in another pile, I would definitely go and watch that after this reading because I think uh, there could be another pile out there that will help you. But, um, but yeah, I feel like you're really trying to devote yourself to your craft, right? Like, look at this, like, look at this, like, devotion that they put into this imagery here or like almost like this um how can i put it like yeah like a prayer like devotion like bowing at at the altar of something right and you're really trying to be devoted to your craft devoted to your vision and i feel like sometimes you feel like your hands are tied because you want to be there for other people, but you also want to be there for yourself and what you're doing, right? To help it prosper, to help it bloom, to help it grow. Um, in the past position, we have the Page of Cups. So I feel like, you know, you felt very lighthearted. You wanted to keep that energy. You didn't want to maybe be too tied up with other people's emotional baggage pile number uh threes you know in the most recent past and uh I felt like you know you just felt very like whimsical like lighthearted, like you know you really wanted to pour into your own energy uh as lightly and as freely as you possibly could right and I felt like even around that time it opened up a lot of new opportunities for you for success, right? Especially material success as well with this Ace of Pentacles at the bottom here. So in the approaching influence, we have the Eight of Wands. So there could be some communication coming in really fast, something that you maybe weren't expecting, or a lot of energy being kind of like thrown at you right now, okay? This could be like an overwhelming amount of love or compassion or kindness or like some type of overflow of uh emotion like a tsunami of emotion right heartfelt emotion here okay but there could be some good news coming your way some really fast communication coming your way too that makes you realize that you know your friendships are really important to you and um you really do want to keep this good balance that you have with them as much as you can even if you don't really believe in balance like work-life balance you can keep uh, you don't have to compromise on your friendships. You don't have to compromise on the people that you love in order to get your work done. And I feel like you're coming to this consensus, right? So other people, how others see you, we have uh, the two of swords. So people see you as peaceful. People see you as really being balanced, like really kind of like um, keeping your peace at all costs, keeping your emotional equanimity at all costs with this 10 of cups and this two of swords, right? Like 
you put you first or you put your emotional uh, health first, right? Because you have to, because that's your love language, right? So to speak, that's how you give love. That's how you show love is being emotionally available and uh, there for people, you know, in the times in which they need it, right? But you also need meditation to do this. You also need balance. You need space. You need peace, right? So I feel like you cultivate your peace by any means necessary and you do so very groundedly, uh, pile number uh, threes by deciding to do that, right? But deciding that this peace means more to you than a lot of things, right? It comes first. In hopes and fears, we have the sun. So what I'm getting is that you hope for, you know, prosperity, um, a lot of good news, a lot of... Uh, you know, even accl acclamations, right, or being acclaimed, you you um, are hoping for vitality, this, these good feelings to surround you and like the sun to come up, the sun to shine, feeling the warmth on your face and just feeling like everything is okay. But I feel like you also fear vulnerability, right? In the traditional right away tarot, we have um, uh, the baby who's nude, who's naked, who's just like, this is me what's up? This is me basking my glory, right? I also feel going back to this card, you don't want it to be a mirage. You don't want what you're doing to be in vain, right? You don't want it to just seem like it's something that is attainable, but then once you get there, it wasn't what you expected, right? Um, yeah. So <laughs> with the outcome in the outcome position, we have the Ace of Pentacles. I feel like it's going to be what you expected and more. Pile number threes, okay? With the Ace of Pentacles, you're coming into a whole new portal of opportunity, of blessings, of trajectory in a good way, right? You have a lot of opportunity for success and for material success that's coming in for you, okay? And I felt like I felt like this is coming after a pause. Like you might have taken a pause, you might have stepped back from a friendship, or it might have created some space within a friendship, but it came back to pay you back, so to speak, in dividends, right? So let's uh, pull some more cards, spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes. Clear, concise accurate messages for our pile number threes tell us more spirit adventures and explorations for our pile number threes to look forward to soon. what adventures and explorations will our pile number threes be able to look forward to soon, spirit clear concise accurate messages <laughs> what adventures and explorations will our pile number threes be able to look forward to soon, spirit? thank you Okay, so first two cards that came out, Scrying Mirror Projection, Dice Gamble, and let's pull one more card. One more card, Spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages. Okay. So we have Handwriting Authenticity. Okay, and then we have Psychometry Sensitivity, and these are the cards that just came out. So... In regards to this friendship, I have a feeling you might feel like someone could be projecting on you, right? With scrying mirror projections, they could be projecting on you for some reason, maybe that you've taken certain gambles or you've taken certain risks, right? And um, maybe they're like, oh, I could never do that. Or they're maybe just projecting a certain outcome on you or you could be projecting a certain outcome on them, right? Pile number threes, it could go either way. I'm feeling like your best bet is just to be you. Be who you are. Don't, it doesn't matter. Like what happens or who says what or who does what. Just being authentically you to me is what got you here, is what is what's getting you here, is what's getting you in the door, whether that's kindness, compassion, whatever. You could kind of feel like, oh dang, like I really helped this person out and they just kind of maybe did me dirty or they you know, they look at me in this way that's not, I, I didn't, a friend shouldn't look at a friend or like, maybe that's your conception of something. Right. But I feel like with Dice Gamble, 
This is a card that also says, should I stay or should I go? Should I do this or should I not do this? And I feel like you have to really reach within and just be authentically who you are. Like, just continue to be you, you know? Because um, I feel like you're very sensitive and maybe even when this person comes around, they just, it's like you get flare-ups. Like, I feel like you're triggered, but like not in... <laughs> I'm looking for a better word to use because it's not triggered. It's like, damn, like I can't even, there's this interesting dynamic here with the friendship or with the relationship that you're still trying to put your finger on, but you can't. And it could be from projection. It could be either your projections on this person or their projections on you. And you're still wondering like, is this, am I seeing what I'm seeing? Am I having these illusions of grandeur like is it me you're wondering right should I should I really pour into this relationship or should I not maybe even um write about it journal about it do something like that but I feel like someone could be very sensitive to what's going on in a friendship right now this could be you this could be the other person someone could be taking something personal is what I'm getting with this psychometry sensitivity right it's a gift but it's also a double-edged sword right your sensitivity is a gift but sometimes it feels like a curse at times because i feel like you're feeling you're inundated with things insights intuition dare i say that you maybe don't even want to admit that this could be um a problem or you know that's what I'm getting, but I kind of want to read a little bit of this, uh, the dice gamble in handwriting authenticity. So let's see. Okay. Let's do dice gamble first. Yep. Just like I said, it says dice gamble. Should you stay or should you go? This is what you've been wondering of late. You want to throw in the towel, but if you do, are you running away from your responsibilities? Perhaps you should persevere and carry on. It might get better. But what if it doesn't? If a situation is not serving you as it should, if you are not being appreciated, then surely it is time to leave. However, as you have put in so much time and energy, it may be a mistake to leave before you reap the rewards. You can stay in the warmth of your current comfort zone or gamble it all away on a leap into the unknown, which might eventually lead you to adventures that will fulfill your soul, dreams, and desires. Only you can decide whether or not to take a risk. Time to roll the dice, okay? So the incantation says, if I leave, the stakes are high, a chance to live or soar and fly. And if I stay, what will I do to know to what I know I would be true? And it says, Gamblers Anonymous can help recover. Well, that's not funny, but Gamblers Anonymous can help recovery from a gambling addiction. So you might have a gambling addiction, uh, pile number threes. I'm just kidding. I don't think you do, but you know. Uh, it says time to take a risk recognize which of your strengths or your weaknesses support a decision you're trying to make so this could be you could be projecting onto the friendship you know maybe the friendship is projecting onto you it says uh you know what to do exactly you know what to do it says whatever you decide you will be supported exactly so uh handwriting authenticity feel like has been coming up in almost every single uh, <clears throat> okay so handwriting authenticity it says it is time to reveal the real you you may know yourself but do you let anyone else know the true you you may feel desperate to be yourself but have worn a mask for so long that you are now worried how friends family and colleagues will react if you stop acting the way they expect you to act. So someone is projecting onto you, maybe, or you're projecting a false self into onto someone as a friend, right? Maybe your authentic nature is to not be just so readily available at, at the whim, right? Maybe you're projecting this mask of like a people pleaser and you're like, I'm not actually, I'm not, I'm not this <laughs> and you're becoming more sensitive to what's being, you know, developed here. And you're just ready to be like, no, 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 no. Right. 
Christ. So let's continue to read. So it says, you may have embodied the role of people please. Oh my gosh, I promise you, pile number threes. I did not read this. I just, okay, anyways. You might have embodied the role of people pleaser or entertainer trying to be all things to everyone. This is what's going on. This is what you're projecting to the situation. You don't have to be everything to everyone. You can't be. That's like impossible, right? So it says, if you show your true colors, will others treat you differently? Will you lose their respect or even their friendship? That's trippy. This is exactly what this is about. Pile number three. This is deep. I didn't, this is an exploration, all right. <laughs> so sheesh. It says, ask yourself these questions and be completely truthful with your answers. When uh, Then decide whether you are brave enough to show your authentic face to the world. It says, incantation. Shall I still hide the real me? What, it, what is it I'm afraid they'll see? Should not my light be owned to shine? And you want to shine. You want to just really do well in what it is, your, your uh, enterprise or your endeavor. You want to shine. Uh, pile number threes. So, uh, yeah, so should not my light be owned to shine? Respect and love I own tis mine. It says, stop trying to hide your light. Stand up for your beliefs. Express your true self. Be an individual. Don't follow the crowd. Time to go it alone. Ooh, someone isn't being true to you or to themselves. Whew. Yeah. So you could be kind of discovering something. Someone might be projecting on you or the situation. Um, and you might be feeling it pile number threes, but whatever the case, you got it. You got it. Okay. You're protected in all ways and you know what to do, right? So the cards say, you know what to do. Okay. So with that being said, my dreamy dreamers, I love you so much pile number threes. If you like this reading, if it resonated, please hit that thumbs up button, like, share, and subscribe, share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, if you are interested in a personal reading, my email will be in the description box down below. Also, this is a dialogue, not a monologue. Please put in the comments. Do you know who this is, this friend, this person you're around, this associate, whatever, right? Uh, can you be yourself? Like, I'll, I'm curious. I want to know. Okay. So with that being said, my dreamy dreamers, I love you so much. And until next time, I'll see you in our next reading. Bye. Hey, pile number fours. Welcome back to your reading. So let's hop right into it. You all chose this aquamarine. I love it. I know it's like Pisces birthstone. Some of us. Um, it's March birthstone, excuse me. So the month of March, you could be born in the month of March. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's break down the qualities of this crystal for you. So aquamarine gives courage, safe travels, and lessens fear and anxiety. So if you have been finding yourself a little stifled with fear or anxiety or decision making of any sorts, um, definitely go go grab an aquamarine, okay? That'll help. And um, I feel like there's definitely some inner strength that you that is coming up for you, right? You, you have a lot of courage. You have a lot of Per perseverance pile number fours which is lovely right and I feel like if you're traveling or if you are like even just travel traveling through different dimensions this will also help with the safety of those of that traveling okay when whatever vehicle you are traveling from you could be actually using a vehicle to travel since we do have the chariot card right here okay so yeah, let's let's move on with your pile selection card and reveal it. Okay, so we have card number 42, organization. I love this. This is, I think this is the reading I resonate with the most right now, okay? Um, it says organization, purpose, planning, efficiency now come to me so easily. I feel like you want to get organized. Like you want to get down to brass tacks, so to speak, pile number four. When I say that, I mean that, okay? I feel like you are looking to really organize your time more, how you delegate your time and really uti utilizing your time wisely. And I truly feel pile number fours, this message is like, this could really be a group message or a collective message, but it's overall for the people watching this at this time because there is no court cards here. And I shuffled this well. There are no court cards here, right? So there's there's no like other people in the environment, so to speak. And I feel like there's not like an identification here uh, in this reading. We have one, two, three major arcanas and then we have minor arcanas and they're not involving the court cards at all. So 
Again, card number 42, four and two, that's six. You're really balancing yourself out right now, okay? And you you want to. You want balance in every aspect of your life and organization will help, okay? So again, this uh, organization card says, purpose, planning, efficiency, now come to me so easily. So keep reiterating that to yourself and in your subconscious. Uh, so the best way to do that, do it before you go to sleep. Purpose, planning, efficiency now comes to me so easily because I'm going to be doing this, okay? <laughs> it, it's already read me. So let's read a little bit more about card number 42, okay? And it's interesting because I always feel like cancers are super organized and we have the chariot or they have the ability to be organized, whether they are or not, I don't know. But I, I don't know why I always just get that. That's their knack. Like they have a, a good sense of organization. So... It says card number 42, organization. Organization doesn't sound particularly magical, does it? But without a practical foundation or structure, we can be chaotic and spend our energy where it is not needed. This spell will calm and, uh, and excuse me, this spell will calm the erratic scattered quality we can all sometimes have and thus help us to make the very most of our personal magic and of the time and energy we have. Organization is a kind of freedom that allows us to be direct and clear in our work, gifting us time and energy to spend at play. Exactly. It says if this card shows you, the universe is asking you to begin to learn about the liberation you can reach through organization and structure. You will begin to manage and structure your time and be very clear. Uh, in your approach to spending your energy. You will waste less and do more with what remains. It says, when we are organized, it clears space and time for the spirit to sing through. It says, if you chose a spell, be prepared to begin to work on your own space and the ways in which you work. You will clear clutter, reorganize your working space, and begin to streamline how you work to create simple fluid systems that open up opportunities. It says, the material and the divine can form an alliance when we are organized. Your dreams can begin to find room and take shape and your power will flow from the strength uh from strength to strength and it's funny we have a strength card here so i feel like pile number fours this is really a lot about this isn't about other people like i said earlier this has nothing to do with other people this has everything to do with you and your will and your drive and where it is that you're going and what you're willing to do and not do to get there right and i feel like this is just kind of reading you literally for like you know um uh for lack of a better term, to get more organized, it will help in some way, shape or form. I'm not saying you have to be this strict person when it comes to your schedule or even your time, but organization will really help you right now, okay? Because there's a lot of cups. There's a lot of overwhelm here, I feel like, when it comes to emotion. And maybe not overwhelm, but there's a lot of emotions here. And I feel like the emotions can be tamed and calm through your space, through maybe automating certain things, right? Um, getting organized in your finances, your your relationships and, you know, your, your personal life or whatever, okay? So uh, let's hop into your reading. Y'all got an additional card, okay, that popped out, which is the Nine of Pentacles. I have a feeling you know you have a lot of abundance in your life. You know you have a lot of abundance coming in with the Nine of Pentacles. You're really getting all your ducks in a row or, and you want some for you and some to spare, right? Some to give away, some to donate, some to tide, right? Tiding uh, is in which we give 10% of our income to like a really worthy cause, whether it be uh, a spiritual cause, religious, uh, uh, environmental, you name it, right? Societal thing, you give 10% of what you earn out to the, out to people, out to those in need, out to you know, God, spirit, source, energy, whatever, and it'll come back to you, right? You don't do it with the intent of like, oh yeah, I'm gonna receive something in return. You just do it out of the kindness of your heart. And with the nine of pentacles, I have a feeling that you're in this space, that you're gearing up to be very abundant, but you have to learn how to organize your abundance and make it work for you and not against you, right? So we'll leave that here. At the bottom of the deck, we have the three of cups. So you could be... I feel like you could be spending a lot of time entertaining others, um, entertaining yourself also, but you have to entertain 
organizing <laughs> is what I'm getting, right? With the Three of Cups, maybe maybe a friend can help you when it comes to organizing, right? Maybe you can have an organization party. Maybe like, uh, it's funny because a couple years ago, like right before the pan, the, you know, the thing that happened, I don't know if you could say that so weird, but the, you know, the thing heard around the world and experience around the world happened. Uh, I went to this like clothing exchange party. It was so cool. Like, People with a lot, like really great style brought clothes that they don't wear. Like maybe they found thrifting and they never got a chance to resell it and they brought it to the party and then you could like swap, you know, mix and match. And I love that because I found some A, really great jeans there. And B, I even had a lot to bring and like it offered a lot of people joy and happiness. And I got to declutter my space by doing that. So with the Three of Cups, maybe you could have fun with it. Uh, and maybe you are able to like kind of get creative with it and maybe allow your friends to kind of help you. Also, abundance, right? Three of Cups does stand for abundance, having a merry time, uh, being like plentiful and things like that, the harvest, right? If you look at the uh, Rider Waite Tarot Three of Cups, it's three women, but I feel like it's body, mind, spirit. It's really the trifecta and they're all in... Uh, alignment with one another to the point where it brings in a harvest right so you could be having a huge harvest but spirit wants you to get organized first before it kind of just pours into you because they're they're um they're preparing you for more for, because you've asked for it, pile number four, is you've asked for more. So they're preparing you for the more that you've asked for, but they want to see what you do with what you have currently, okay? So, so let's start the reading. We're going to do the Celtic cross spread and, you know, I'll incorporate some freestyle insights uh, along with it. So, uh, in the you now heart of the matter position, we have the two of swords. So I feel like you're really coming to conclusions on a mind and heart level. You want to balance out the playing field, right? And I think that's interesting, mind, heart decision, because we have the justice card in the hopes and fears, and it's the same thing. Mind with the feather to me, like, you know, the, the ethereal, and then your heart. You want to be balanced in your heart and your mind. And, uh, you're going to, you're definitely going to pile number uh, fours. In the challenge position, we have the seven of pentacles. So I feel like you are in this assessment stage right now. Like you're really contemplating making a decision. Should I keep this? Should I not keep this? Should I give this away? Should I not give this away? Should I sell this? Should I, you know, take it with me if I move or wherever I go, you're really contemplative. You're really like balancing out your investments or you're trying to decide what is an investment for you to keep and what would be better maybe even being given away or, you know, donated or something like that. Um, in the conscious goal position, we have the seven of cups. So I feel like, yeah, you're, it's almost as if you know by getting organized, a lot of the dreams that you have will manifest quicker. They'll come in for you quicker, especially with the chariot card being at the bottom of the seven of cups. It's like, you know, you'll move forward quicker. You'll be light. You know, you'll kind of pack light, so to speak, right? So you can move forward in your endeavors quicker, more efficiently, and have more willpower while you do it as well, okay? It's almost like spirit is just waiting for your call right? You see like these wolves or these whatever hounds, they're just kind of waiting with the chariot because they're waiting for your call. Like, okay, well, what, what have you decided on? And then we'll pick up the rest of the slack or, you know, so to speak. In the unknown influence position, we have the six of cups. I feel like maybe a lot of things that you have kind of hold this memory of the past for you, right? Um, yeah, they could just hold a lot of memories, like childhood memories, or you're you're putting more, it's like you're putting that onto it where maybe there isn't, right? You could be holding on to something because it brings you nostalgia. I think with the Six of Cups, I always think of nostalgia too. So, you know, yeah. But with the Justice card here, right underneath the Six of Cups, I feel like it's what's going to free you up. It's what's going to make you more balanced, right? 
is nostalgia making you balanced or is it kind of taking up space where you say you want to grow, where you say you want to be, right? This is a very quick reading. It was like psh, clear to me. In the past position, we have the two of cups, right? So this could be about a connection here. This could be about, you know, someone in your life, maybe a soulmate connection, maybe someone asking you out, right? Um, yeah, maybe about another person in your life too. With the six of swords here. It's almost as if maybe like thoughts of another person from your childhood or something could have been cluttering your mind and now you're getting organized. Maybe even in therapy, pile number fours, you, you could be taking up therapy or thinking therapy is a good idea. So you can kind of like deconstruct a lot of things from your past and like feel more light, you know, lighthearted, uh, even uh, because you have gotten a lot of burdens off of your chest or a lot of things that happened in the past you've never gotten to talk about until now, right? And it's going to lead you into calmer waters when it comes to a connection that has been heavy on your heart and now you're getting organized to kind of clear up, right? Once and for all. In the approaching influence, we have strength, okay? So you have this inner resilience, this inner prowess, and I feel like you're like a gentle giant, pile number fours, right? And you need love. You need love and compassion too, and you need peace. And I feel like you're organizing your life to have more peace in your life. You could be a Leo or have a lot of Leo highly aspected in your chart, or you could just be evo evoking the characteristics, the personality characteristics of a Leo right now, which is vivacious, vibrant, charming, easygoing, lighthearted, but also like kind of wanting to be the center of attention as well. Wanting attention, right? Look at this lion here. This lion here is just rolling around. Like it just, it just wants to be loved. It just wants attention, right? So in your inner resources slash talent position, we have uh, the nine of wands. Okay. You're, per you're persistent. Okay. You have the gift of perseverance. You really do. You're very persistent. You don't give up without a fight, so to speak. Right. But you're also healing. You're healing right now and you are a healer and you are healed, right? Uh, is what I'm getting. You're healing and you know how to heal from cer uh, certain things. And this could be, um, I feel like you, you have the gift of not giving up on certain situations, but you know it's time to organize your life. It's time to really kind of like <sighs> cut out the things that aren't a necessity and bring in the things that are. And simplifying your life is going to make your life more simple, right? In a, in a very good way. Um, and how others see, we have the chariot. You move forward. You move forward in life. You're victorious. You take the bull by the horn, so to speak, right? You really use your willpower. You have a lot of will, inner will, inner resilience to you that uh, helps you to succeed, right? To, to move forward towards your dreams. And I feel like people really admire that about you. You could also have a lot of cancer in your chart or you could be a cancer. Like I said earlier, like I always think cancers are super organized or you could have like uh, cancers, high, the sign cancer highly aspect in your chart it could be your North node or your South node. Uh in the hopes and fears position, you have the justice card, right? Libra. So I feel like your hopes is to really balance out yourself, have this equanimity, have this lightheartedness, right? Having your light, your heart be as light as a feather. But I feel like on the opposite end of that, you don't want to lose the past. You don't want to completely annihilate the past is what I'm getting. You still want to hold on to those memories, but in a different way, right? You don't want to feel like, yes, I'm so lighthearted, but like I completely forgot who I am. You know what I'm saying? Or where it is I'm going because in order for us to change our futures, to me, we have to confront our past, right? In a certain way. And I don't, that's not, bond right that that's just something that I felt to say so take it as you will 
but I feel like sometimes we have to confront our past and ourselves in order to move forward. And I feel like you, you have that hope too, but you also have that fear of what will, um, what will come up on the surface. Like have I been holding on to something too tight? I have to completely uproot my life and change everything. Like I didn't think it would come this far or have to, you know, be like this so drastic, right? Just to get organized and just to have myself facilitated. But in the outcome position, we have the Six of Swords. So I feel like your mind is going to be very um, cleansed, right? Your, your, your mind space is going to be freed up in regards to a relationship. And this could have been a friendship. This could have been like a soulmate connection that uh, you held on very, you held on to, you know, pile number fours. This was very clear reading. You could be dealing with a breakup so to speak and I don't even there's not like a three of swords here there's you know tower but I'm getting breakup from like a soul connection like someone who was heavily invested in your life and vice versa and now you're you're organizing your life now back to being maybe a single person or doing things on your own where like you were attached to the hip to with this person so to speak right Everywhere they went, you went. And with the Three of Cups, this could have been a friend, right? So I feel like you're just getting yourself more organized, more clarity, uh, and your mind is being freed up, right? Like you're you're having a lot of more peace of mind. You're going into calmer waters in your mind about this relationship. You're actually letting it go. You're releasing it is what I'm getting. Now, that's interesting because... I feel like it has a lot to do with organization to organizing your time and the things that you dwell on as well. Okay. So let's pull some more cards to conclude your readings. Uh, pile number four. This was real quick. This was like a no brainer. So <clears throat> tell me more spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number fours. Tell me more adventures and explorations that our pile number fours can look forward to soon adventures and explorations that our pile number fours can look forward to very soon thank you oh wow okay so a lot of cards came up so we have dreams incubation you could be dreaming about someone a lot um someone has been dreaming about you you've been heavy on someone's mind lately pile number threes and i oh, pile number fours excuse me i feel like once you get organized you're gonna start like how to transmuting the energy or like transmuting like the memories, right? We have smoke prayers. So your prayers are about to be answered. Something, once you get organized, like I said earlier, you're going to be inundated with a lot, a lot of abundance, a lot of prosperity, a lot of celebration, a lot of joy. Look, we have phrenology with certainty. And I feel like you're, you're certain about this. You know what to do. You do. That's why the... This reading was so clear, and I've, I see 2222202202 on the um, time is what I just seen. And precision, we have certainty and precision. You're getting yourself organized. Numerology with precision. This card is all about like, look, you could be having a lot of money come in. Like I just said, that's so trippy. You could be having a lot of money come in, but you need to know what to do with the money when you get it, right? And this is a prayer that was answered. And it's like your spirit guide is letting you know this is coming through. This is coming in now, but you have to prepare for it, right? Preparation prevents poor performance. So you don't want something to come in and just have it slip through your fingers. You want to prepare the table for it so people can sit, right? The I'm using that as a metaphor, but so the abundance can sit comfortably so you can be comfortable. So it's like this automation that, that's happening where you don't lose anything. You you are getting the things that you want and you are using them wisely, right? Um, I want to read this numerology card because I have a feeling I should. Okay, I feel like I can't even find it. Okay, here it is. So, <clears throat> excuse me. 
So we have numerology with precision and it says everything you have worked for hangs in the balance. So it is vital that you go through every detail thoroughly. Organization. You cannot afford to make errors at this time. Focus and precision will help achieve the results you desire. If you are serious about eliminating debt, step away from poverty consciousness and negative thinking. If you want to draw more money to you, clean and organize your physical environment so as to make room for it to come. That's trippy. I'm, I'm thrilled. It says, keep a record of all of your expenditures. Draw up a profit and loss sheet to record your income and expenses. Check your bank statements carefully. Research utility and other companies to find the best rates. It's time to take back control. What did I say, file number fours? It says, incantation, my head's no longer in the sand. I'll focus on the task in hand and check each detail of my debt so nothing will slip through the net. It says, other divinatory meanings, your accuracy wins you a sought after position, certainty. You're getting something that you prayed for. It's coming in, pile number fours. It says, an important event coincides with an auspicious date, OMG. Keep visualizing a preferred balance on your bank statement. Boom. Woo. That was, that was nothing but good news if you ask me. So congrats, <laughs> pile number four. Just get organized. That's all you have to do. This has nothing to do with anybody else. I know what I said earlier, but I that's that that will be for some of you, right? What I said earlier about like a friend or a connection and you letting go the memories to an extent, right? Keeping the good ones, but letting go of like negativity. But this has really, it has everything to do with who you are and what you want to accomplish. This is all about you right now, okay? So with that being said, Palmer Forest, I love you so much, my dreamy dreamers. If you like this reading, if it resonated, please hit that thumbs up button. Like, share, and subscribe. Share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone who would be best who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, if you're interested in a personal reading, my um, email will be in the description box down below. Again, this is a dialogue, not a monologue. So please hop in the comment sections. Tell me if you like this reading. Tell me, you know, put your input. I would love to hear from you. Pile number four is okay. So until next